We ready? Good job. Good morning. Welcome if you're, we're so glad that you're here in person with us today and also welcome if you're on Facebook with us today. We're glad that you've stopped in here for worship and um, as we continue on with our second week of a worship series that we're working on right now. So you'll see in the front of the connect and also just for the people that are online, we have now made the Connect available through our Facebook page and also on our website. So if you'd like to read the Connect if you're at home, um, it is on there. And so you should have got a link, or if you go back one post, it should have been posted this morning so you can check it over. So all of you that are here that grabbed the Connect and you came in, you'll see that we're continuing on with our worship series, Deck the Halls. Um, last week we looked at decking the halls with hope. Um, and so, and we're reminded if we, are, if, and so this week we move our, forward to decking it with peace. Um, so we're continuing to work our way through there. Reminder, if you did miss a week, um, we, our services are on our website and our Facebook page. An update on Pastor John, I've been asked by a couple people. Um, he is doing okay and has been self-quarantined with no symptoms since last Friday morning. So that's um, a good thing to do. And if all goes as planned, he'll test again tomorrow and be back with us next Sunday. Um, Carol has also tested negative again in the middle of the week and is doing fine as well. They're living in separate parts of the house and keeping themselves very safe. So he's told me to pass on to you. Thank you for your prayers and your support during this time. And he's ready to come back and be with all of us. So I ask you and we both ask you to continue to keep the Walker family in our prayers and the many others who have been affected by COVID-19. And we ask you to continue to pray for the medical field as they are treating so many of these days. And it just seems to be some of them are becoming tired. And we ask you to give them the strength and the courage to continue forward. Our stewardship drive is wrapping up um, this week. And so if you've not been able to get your pledge card in, we'd ask you still to try to do that. You can drop it in the, in the um, plate on the way out or send it in um, lastly, um, today during the service, we will pray over the pledge cards we have received, and we want to thank you again for your financial commitments to the 2021 ministry year. All of our youth meet today, our eight, all ages of youth, our, our third spot, which is sixth through eighth graders, will meet from four to five, and then our ninth through twelfth graders will meet from five to six here in the fellowship hall. Our K through two club will meet from 2.45 to 3.45, and our 3.45 club will meet from 3.45 to five o'clock for a scavenger hunt. So Katie would love to have you at any of those times, and I will reiterate for those online, and then for those here, um, we as the leadership team of the church believe that we do it in a very safe and secure way. Um, it's, it's led by people who take that very serious, so we ask your kids, if you're watching, we'll wear masks, we'll do everything we can on our side to keep things safe and secure. Today's the last day to order um, poinsettias, so if you need to do that, please get that in. Next week will be our congregational meeting next Sunday after all three services with the purpose of electing five members to the First English Lutheran Church Council. Angel tree gifts are, need to be back next Sunday, and so we encourage you to do that. If you can see on camera, I'm not sure if you can, we have decorated our tree, we've got our Christmas stuff up, we still have some poinsettias. We're still in the season of Advent, but we also celebrate and wait for the birth of Christ. We thank Nikki and her friends who, who helped set all this up this week. And it's also in the sanctuary as well. You'll see in the Connect our first announcements about Christmas Eve worship on December 24th. Um, if all goes well and everything continues to, to go as it is, we will have three worships, 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 11 p.m. All three services will be identical in the sanctuary. Um, we'll do Christmas carols, scriptures, sermon, candle lighting, but none will have communion this year. At least one service, we hope, will be streamed. Details still being worked out. And we're still working out where we will ask people just to let us know which service you're going to come to. So we can only put so many people in the sanctuary at a time. And so we'll see how those numbers change and how they come in. So that information will be coming out this week through a mailing and then through the email and through Facebook. So please look, out, look for that this week. And then you see the Sunday after Christmas, we will have one service at 9.30. There's a lot going on. Please take the Connect. Stay connected with us. If you're online, look at the Connect. Um, it's a way to continue to know that we are doing ministry here at First England, English in the midst of all this stuff. 
So this morning we come to worship God, and that's a great thing. We come and worship God because we know that we need to do that. If either in person or online, we need to worship God and give thanks for Him, for what He's done for us. But we always stop and we confess and we hear the forgiveness of God. So I invite you to please stand for that part of our service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God's desire. Let us take a moment for our own personal reflection this morning. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the glad news, hear the good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's priests, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening song, Arise, Shine. Continue on with our call to worship. Let's deck the halls with peace of the coming Savior. In this season that can be stressful, God has prepared a way for us. Let us pray the Lord be with you. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, slow us down amid this season's chaos. Slow us down to witness your beauty in the littlest detail. Slow us down to understand what you are calling us to do. Slow us down so we can appreciate your hands at work. Slow us down and grant us peace. Amen. Please be seated. Before we move on to the lighting of the Advent wreath, we, yep, right there. Normally at this time of the service, we would invite people to come forward and put your pledge cards into the offering plate, and then we would sit back down and we'd say a prayer. This morning we have collected them all and we've placed them in the offering plate, knowing that they are given to God in glory. This morning we will say a prayer over them, so let us pray. Gracious and loving God, giver of all that is good and true and beautiful and life-giving, 
These cards represent our sweat. They represent our lives. They represent our dreams. The the pledges which we make on them are but tokens of the awesome gifts that have been given to us. And they are pledged in thanksgiving for all we have received, for all we have been inspired to be, for all we are challenged to become in this place. May they be the first fruits of all we have and not what we have left over, so that we may live out as closely as possible how you give to us. May we see them as offerings to you, sacred, holy, yet earthly, filled with possibilities. May we hold this image in our hearts and minds so that so as we watch our offerings each week come to your table, we can see our very selves being part of this offering. It is us on the table, living sacrifice to you. Amen. Amen. Our Advent wreath or our Advent candles um, is something that we do every year here. Um, it's something that we do during the Advent season to remind us as we get forward to um, Christmas. So we have the one candle, two candles, three, four candles, four candles, and then the Christ candle. So this morning, we're going to light the second Advent candle. And if I can have, Kyson, will you come light the second Advent candle for us today? Do you know how to do a lighter? Okay. So stand back here. When it goes along, you'll say, light the first one. So you're going to light the first one. Then when it says light the second one, you've got to light the second one, all right? So if you guys would follow along. During the season of Advent, make space to light candles in our churches and our home. Last week, we lit the candle of hope. Today we light the candle of peace. We remember to trust in the Prince of Peace. Go ahead. Anyone you want. There you go. Good job. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks that we continue to move through this Advent season. We ask you to be with us, to surround us, and help us prepare our lives to celebrate your birth. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I invite forward, I invite forward, I invite the kids to head off to their Sunday school class. Um, High school, middle school, head that way. Everyone else will head that way. If you've not been here for Sunday school, Katie's coming after you right now, so she'll explain sort of what goes on in Sunday school if you'd like to be part of it. Um, that's, that's a wonderful thing as well. We continue on with Marv, our reader. The first reading this morning is from the 26th chapter of Isaiah, verses seven through 13. The way of the righteous is level. O just one, you make smooth the path of the righteous. In the paths of your judgment, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and your renown are the soul's desire. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. If if favor is shown to the wicked, they do not learn righteousness. In the land of the uprightness, they deal perversely and do not see the majesty of the Lord. O Lord, your hand is lifted up, but they do not see it. Let them see your zeal for your people and be ashamed. Let the fire of your adversaries consume them. O Lord, you will ordain peace for us, for indeed, all that we have done, you have done for us. O Lord, our God, other lords beside you have ruled over us, but we acknowledge your name alone, the word of the Lord. Second reading is from the third chapter of Colossians, verses 12 through 17. 
As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you, must, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of the Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the gospel reading today. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our gospel comes from the gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 21 through 25. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in my heart, and you will find rest for your souls." For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Greetings on this second Sunday in Advent, the second Sunday in Advent to where we gather and we wait for the celebration of the Christmas morning. The season of waiting Advent has been known as. The season to wait for that time, for that anticipation. But also for me, and and hopefully maybe for you a little bit this season too, it can be a season to step back and, and review our lives as followers of Christ. It can be a season to review how you, me, the church, have been the hands of feet in, of Christ in this community, in your family, in your circles. Because here's the other part about Advent some of you might not know, and some of you might also know. There's this thing called the liturgical year, which is the fancy word to say that that's how the church order, order, keeps things ordered in some kind of rhythm. And so one would think that the new year begins January 1st, but in the church, the liturgical year, Advent is the beginning of that time. It runs Advent, December, all the way up to the next November. So it is this time that the church can say it's, it's that time to wait, it's a time to review, and possibly even a time to restart. So that is what we should do. So to begin that this morning, I want you to do something for me. I want you to do a little bit of an exercise, not up and down like jumping jack exercise, a brain exercise for a second. When you think of the word peace, P-E-A-C-E, what comes to mind? Think about that for a second. Some might be thinking a piece of pie, but that's not what I'm talking about. Peace. If you are in a church, or if you've been part of First English, or, or part of a church, you probably maybe jump right to the passing of the peace we do in worship. 
Here at First English, that's a pretty big thing. I mean, normally when it happens, there's the shaking of hands and the hugs and, and the great feelings of greeting each other. And, and we as the pastor sort of have to corral you all back so we can continue on with our worship. We at First English and probably any churches, many churches, love this part of the worship. But we know that's changed this year a little bit. We've changed that with simply giving the peace sign. We've changed that by simply waving. What else comes to your mind when I say the word peace? As I did a re quick reflection on this, I thought of those times when I was growing up that I would watch movies about the 60s or read books or see movies that, about the 60s and, and the peace movement that was going on and the signs that said peace, not war, and, and peace and love were the words that many people used. And I would always see people using the two-finger peace sign. That came to my mind right away. While I was growing up, the one that I heard a lot of entertainers would say, they'd always say, peace in the Middle East. Peace in the Middle East. Because that's what was going on as I was growing up at that time. But I still remember always my pastor saying to me, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And I would reply, and also with you. You've also probably heard the word shalom, salam, the church I actually worked at growing, worked at as a youth pastor in Toledo was named Salem Lutheran Church. 200 years that church sat there named Salem, peace. Peace in the middle of a neighborhood that came very chaotic and, and had a lot of different things going on, but that church became known as a peaceful place, living up to its name. What comes to your mind? What about a song? Do you have a song that comes to your mind when you think about peace? I kept thinking, and I looked in our hymnal, and it's not in our hymnal, but let me sing it to you in case you don't know it. I know you're all excited about this part. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. That's a song, but it's not in our hymnal, but it is a song. Or my favorite one that I can't find in hymnal either is, I got peace like a river in my soul. I got peace like a river in my soul. I got peace like a river and it's flowing in my soul. I got peace like a river in my soul. You turned off Facebook, turn it back on. I won't torture you anymore with my singing. <laughs> turn your ears back on. I know you all want me to join the praise team. I just can't do that, sorry. But songs come to my mind even when I think of the word peace. What about you? If you're like me, when one hears the word peace, a lot of thoughts and images and songs come to mind this morning or even throughout the week. When you leave here, I'm hoping that you think about it and I would encourage you to sit with it in your heart for a second. Sit with it in your heart for a little bit and talk about it and see where God may lead you as you reflect on this word peace. It has a huge impact on who you are. It has a huge impact on your family and the lives and the circle you live in. It has a huge impact in the world that we're called to be part of. And that is why our series asks us to deck the halls with peace this year and challenges us to see how we can make that happen. Because saying it's easy, but actually doing it's hard. Saying it is giving it lip service, but actually doing it is hard. See, we're in the second week of this series titled Deck the Halls. And remember, last week we decked the halls with hope. And understanding that when we feel uncertain, God provides. Hopefully you left with this idea, or you turned off Facebook with this idea, uncertainty can lead to prayer, and prayer leads to hope. That true hope can only be found through prayer and listening to God, because we know he provides. That's why we're here. We believe in that. And today we move forward to the next part of it, and we're asked to ponder how peace can deck our halls. And as I did last week, I really found the subtitles to be helpful. See, this week, deck the halls with peace, and the subtitle is this. In an uneven season of stress and distraction, God offers us the roadmap to peace. Let me say that again for you. 
In an uneven season of stress and distraction, we all know those, don't we? God offers us the roadmap to peace. I loved this idea, and I love this idea that God offers a roadmap to peace in our life. But I'm left to wondering, as I read that many times, is I wonder if I followed the roadmap I was given, or did I try other places to find peace, and maybe that's why sometimes I struggled. If you remember, a few months ago, I shared with you guys while I was in seminary that I had the privilege of working at a Mary Haven Adult Treatment Center in Columbus, Ohio. And as I was preparing this week and praying and asking God to help me understand about this roadmap he sets out for us, this time at Mary Haven kept popping into my head, kept popping into my my prayers and my thoughts, the time I spent with people in the sessions listening to them, and all of them explaining how they went off their roadmap. They didn't use that word, but they went off their, their own way and set out for things looking for peace in other places. And that's what led to their addiction. And the plan for them to be at this place was to get back on that road map, to get back on that journey that they were supposed to go on. And they called it the 12-step process. And, and they knew if they truly worked it, they could get there. But a not unless their road map had God involved in it. Whatever they called that God, which listening and working there, we, I knew it was from God, And God had a roadmap for even the people that didn't know who he was. He had a roadmap for them, a place for them to find peace. But they knew that the only roadmap was the only way they could beat their addiction. It was proven. I think my mind jumps to addiction because most of us can look at someone with that or know someone like that, and we see how maybe they did go off their roadmap. But it also helps us to realize maybe we're off our road map as well. Maybe it's not with an addiction, but with something else. Maybe it's with something else that we've, we've stepped away from what God wants for us and we know that we're not having peace. But hear this, if that's you. We also all know that God desires them, us, that he desires that we are back with him on the road map. And we need to know that he welcomes us back with open arms. Time after time during my short stay there, I saw more people break their addiction and give credits to God. And I'm almost positive, I'm almost sure that some of you, some of you in here have met people that have gotten back on the uh, on the roadmap and they've only been able to do that because of God, and they confess that to you. Brothers and sisters, God offers us a roadmap to peace. And that's what we're here for. I don't know with what all you might be bringing with you today. I don't know what stress you might be having on your heart. But maybe some of you are struggling today. And if that's true, know that there's a roadmap back. Know that there's a roadmap back and God desires for you to follow it. But maybe you've fallen off it or can't seem to find it or never really thought about God giving you a roadmap to peace. He does. God gives us a roadmap, and it is different than what the world wants us to see, wants us to believe, wants us to do. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about the roadmap that the world wants us to go on, because they'll tell us to fill our lives with many different things, but not the stuff that really matters. They'll tell us about this peace that we we might be able to feel for a second, but not the true peace, not the true peace that God desires for us. The God, the world will provide us with a peace, but not the kind, not the peace that, that Marv read so wonderfully that God ordained on us. That we learned in the book of Isaiah, he speaks in our reading today. The world will give us a quick fix, a way to bury whatever stress or distraction we may be feeling. It's not the peace that we need to deck the halls with during this season or really any other day of our life. It's the, it's the peace that God ordains. I still remember Helen. Helen was someone part of our church at Augsburg when I was growing up. She was one of those people that you just knew had a relationship with Christ. She was an amazing person, always loving and caring. And, and, and it was just like she, you could tell that peace just was part of her life. She'd come to worship smiling and she'd worship the whole time. She smiled and she talked to everybody. And, and you could just tell that, that God ordained her with this peace. 
And she would have conversations as she got, I got older and she got older and we would talk and, and she would share with me how her life was just blessed by God and, and by following what God desired for her to serve others, to care for others, to love others, that her life was, was blessed because of that. We all may know somebody like that in our own lives. You probably brought them up in a conversation like, wow, have you ever seen how grateful they are, how, how they're just filled with this power? I've been at many churches now, and I can tell you names of people over and over that I've seen that in. Peace, it's something. And I've said it a few times, it's ordained on us. Don't let that reading from Isaiah slip you by today. Don't let that word ordain slip in, in and out of your ears today. If you're not sure what it means, let me tell you, it means an order or decree that was given. Something officially and this is what Isaiah tells us. He says, O oh Lord, you will ordain peace for us. For indeed, all that we have done, you have done for us. See, we have to understand that, that this is in the middle where, where there was stress and distraction. There was there for the city of Jerusalem. They were under attack from every other place, and God comes in there and he ordains peace for them. He ordains it for them by, by taking care of all the distractions around them. God speaks to them through Isaiah and tells them over and over, you are ordained for peace. This promise, this proclamation, this order, this decree given to the people of Jerusalem is also given for us today. I've said it before, I don't know what's keeping you from peace, either here in person or online, but know this. God desires it for you. God desires it for you. He wants you to have it. He orders you to have it. So don't let the stress and distractions be a distraction off the roadmap laid out for us. But as I say many times in my sermons, it's not easy to get there. It's not easy because those stress and distractions have so much power in our lives. They have so much power and they are so easy to fall into. But what if we had a plan to cover them? What if we had a plan for when they do pop up in our lives that we don't fall into those traps? What if first we own the fact that there are distractions and stresses in our life, but had a plan to get back on the road map? What if we had a plan? Because I'd love to be able to tell you that everything this morning when you come in and you hear the sermon and you're fed by the, the gospel and you're fed here and you leave here and poof, the rest of the week is going to be peace-filled and you're not going to have those frustrations I really wish I could, but it's not truth. It's hard. The day you walk into work tomorrow, something's going to pop up. But let's look at our readings today to find out what that roadmap is he laid out for us. See, he lays out, he lays out a way that we can conquer these distractions and stress. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart in which you were called in one body. In the reading from Colossians, those are the words that Jesus, that, those are the words that are written there. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Rule your heart. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart to which indeed you were called in one body. The second part of the roadmap. There it is. First, we have to realize that God wants us to have peace. And not the peace we talked about that just simply, oh, peace, peace, but the peace, the real peace. These are good, but not the one that God is talking about. Once we realize that we are ordained, decreed, ordered by God to have peace, second, now we have to let Christ rule our hearts. If we want the peace, if we want this peace that's been ordained to us, we have to work a little bit ourselves and allow God to rule our hearts. This is when it gets real. Rule. Does that mean all of it? Yeah. That means all of it. These are the questions I had when I came through it myself and I read the passage. To, re to rule my heart could mean I may need to change a little about who I am. To rule my heart, rule my heart could mean I may have to see people differently than I saw them before. If I want the peace of Christ to rule my heart, well, that would mean it would have to be driven by love. If I want peace 
in my life, I have to allow Christ to rule my heart, which means it has to be first ruled by love. That's where it rubs. That's where it can be hard for us because we're all who we are and and we have our own personal opinions and we have our own frustrations and we have our own angers and we have our ways that people should be doing stuff and and we, we live our lives and make comments because that's how it should be and we're right. But what if we started first with the love that Jesus gave us and the love that he wants us to show to other people? Peace would be there. I'll tell you one thing I know, and I know many of you probably do, you stew over more stuff that you said or actions that you feel or or ways that you think things should be that have nothing to do with God or love, and it can be frustrating. There's no peace. So our roadmap, we are ordained to let peace rule over all of your heart, and that means let it be ruled by love. And third, pray. 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 And pray often. Because when we leave here this morning, it's going to be hard tomorrow because something's going to pop up. As we hear in our gospel today, where I slowed down, it said, come to me all you are, dot, 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 dot. That is what God is asking us to do, to come to him. And the way we do that is in prayer. And here's the best part. As we learned last week, he will provide. Maybe not the answers we want, maybe not the way we want him to, but he will provide. So for us during this Advent season, we are reminded that it is through a baby boy, a baby born in the town of Bethlehem, that peace entered into the world. Don't allow the world to tell you anything else. The true peace can only come from the one we know as Christ, The Jesus Christ, the one that we're preparing for to celebrate his birth, the one who was born of Mary, and the one who said, no ear may hear his coming, but the world of sin, where meek souls will receive him, still still the dear Christ enters in. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. See, so many times we put our hearts, we put our things into the things that don't really matter, that don't have control, but if we follow the paths that we're called to do, if we're followed the roadmap that Christ sends out for us, if we follow that and understand that we are ordained and that we let Christ rule our heart, meaning that we have love in our heart for people and we pray often, then we have peace. It's not easy, but we're called to do it. We're ordained for this peace, and that passes all understanding that it can be. And may that peace be with you today. Be with you today and every day as you leave this space. Now let us stand and sing about that peace in old little town of Bethlehem and hear about how Christ broke in. Amen. i
God, we come today and we ask you to help us. Help us to fill our lives, our hearts with this peace. This peace that passes all understanding. The peace that you offer us every day. We know that stress and distractions enter into our lives daily, hourly. Help us not to allow them to disrail us, derail us, to take us off course. That you've laid that road map, given us the way to do it. God, we ask you to continue to be with our world. We ask you to continue to be with the doctors and nurses, the people working in laboratories all over, the people who are trying to find a, a way to live with COVID. For the vaccine for the doctors that are working on that, and we ask you just to continue to surround them and keep them safe. God, for our community here, as, as we do see a rise and things like that, we ask you to ordain us, order us to care for others, to do the right thing, to be safe. Guide us and lead us. God, and as we enter into Christmas season, we, we do it with joyous hearts. We do it with joyous hearts knowing that you broke into this world to show us your love. This morning, we lift up all those who are on our prayer list. We lift up people who need your healing touch. We give you thanks that we're allowed to be your hands and feet in this community. Guide us and lead us. God, we lift all these prayers up and we say the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the sign of peace with each other this morning. We will move forward on to our offering introduction. The introduction to this series gave us this wonderful introduction to the offering that I'd like you to hear this morning. The world distracts and deters us, yet we are called to follow the road map God lays before us. The way, the way will have its difficulties, but God invites us to focus on the path before us and grant us peace. Let us pray together. Mighty God, as you prepare the way for us, you conquer the obstacles that would have hindered our journey. Help us to shift our focus to see you more clearly. Grant us the wisdom to help create spaces of peace in the name of all that is good. Amen. Our thanksgiving for the word will be a call and response this morning. Praise and thanks to you, holy God. By your word, you made all things. For your word of life, O God. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. For, 
for your word of life, O God. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. For your word of life, O God. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. us take in that moment that is the peace that God desires us to have knowing that he forever reigns in the midst of all things that we cannot understand 
that we cannot understand, he reigns. And that's the peace that he desires us to have, that he ordains us with, that he reigns forevermore. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. And you